Moss OSR Old School Rotaries and today I'm going to show you guys on how I go about uh, inspecting these rotor housings basically trying to see what uh, is reusable and what's not reusable um, it just doesn't take too long but you got to know what you're looking for in order to reuse these so I got a set right here that's a series 1 uh, 10A and I got a series 2 10A now this one's from the Mazda Trix engine I purchased and this is the original uh, set that came on on the blue on the blue fresh built car the one I'm working on so um, it's pretty neat uh, this is a series one there are some differences but I'm not gonna get too much into that uh, today uh, what I want to show you guys is just uh, the basics for uh, inspecting and seeing what's reusable and what's not and right off the bat I'm gonna let you guys know, man. I got some bad news on the 10A built, real bad news. But uh, nevertheless, uh, yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and get right into it. The first thing I look at is the chrome. Uh, you obviously want to make sure there's no chrome missing, any chipping, or any harsh, deep gouges on the chrome. Um, as you can see, this one has it on the compression side. That's why I have it upside down so I can show you guys and it's it, it's pretty much gone so um, so you might want to always first check on the compression side if this was on the exhaust side i wouldn't really worry about it i would just reuse it but since this is on the compression side um you know i would definitely give it a second thought or uh, see if i could get it fixed or whatnot but this is definitely a no-go um in my opinion uh, I, I wouldn't reuse that i would just set it to the side Alright, so as you can see, I'm down to three rotor housings and the next step I take after uh, checking out the chromes, I look at the O-rings, the water O-rings and I just look for uh, any kind of corrosion, any crack, any kind of chipping, chipping or any kind of uh, um, decay on, uh, on there. So if you guys remember this engine from uh, this video, when I was turning it down, uh, the rotor had some rust on there and it looked like if there was some kind of uh, um, moisture somehow got in there. Now I know why this engine didn't want to spin and why that rotor was stuck inside in. And this is why. Uh, there was a coolant failure here. Now if you look at it really closely, there's a little pinhole right here. And that pinhole starts down here and it ends in here. So not only is it corroded right here in this edge but inside too and there's a few other spots there's one spot here one in a one in the back so it's all on on, on the bottom section of this rotor housing uh, i already checked this one this one checked out good this one checked out good so uh yeah that's why i like the pressure washer because uh it just pressures out any weak points and you won't have any surprises when the, once the engine is installed or, or once you start uh, building that engine up so uh, yeah this is what you want to look out for here all right so uh, two down and two to go so I have a series one left and a series two and these are the slight differences it's just uh, where the bolts go these little holes here uh, this one's flat and uh, that's the series two and this is the series one it's got some old rings right here you got to put on but i said hey worst case scenario i'll just build a frankenstein 10a i'll just <laughs> go ahead and uh, use these two but as i went to the third step uh which is pretty much checking up uh, for distortion and what that pretty much means uh you gotta know what you're looking for right so what that means is that if this rotor house is basically twisted in any way or distorted in any way so there's two ways i go about it um let me show you the first step or the first way i go about it and that's basically using um this right here straight edge and you use a filler gauge okay so this is the good rotor housing and basically uh, what you want to do you want to just lay it flat like this and use your filler gauge and as you could see it's not going under there you could try to uh do it as flat as you can and it's it's just not it, it's not supposed to go under there if it goes under there then you have an issue and you have to uh swap it out and you do that in every uh area of the rotor housing uh monster just recommends you uh doing it four ways which is this way this way 
this way and this way but um i don't know i just tend to kind of like go all around it and just try to see you know um if i could get it fit anywhere but as you guys can see this is this is what you call a good rotor housing and i already went ahead and checked it but uh that's what you want to do that's that's the method let me show you the bad rotor housing now all right now this is the bad rotor housing now you could go ahead and uh see how like it easily goes under there see that that's not supposed to happen see it won't go in there and it won't go in there but it's easily going in here so this rotor housing is obviously distorted and you want to check both sides so you can see you see how like easily and if I try to reach it through here It's just, it's not supposed, to, this is not supposed to happen. So this rotor housing is obviously distorted. And like I said, you wanna check both sides cause this one, uh, when you turn it over, the other side's nice and um, flat, but it's off on top. But if you turn it the way it is right now, it's off on the bottom, but it's it's good right here on the top. So always make sure you check uh, both sides. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little, a little trick or a little tip or take it as you will. But uh, this, this is what I mainly do, then I'll jump to this. But uh, let me put the camera down. It's kind of hard to do the, this with, with, with one hand. And uh, uh, But let me, let me show you guys right quick. All right, so this is another way you can go about checking uh, any uh, distortion on your uh, rotor housings. This is a pretty easy method. So basically, you want to make sure your dowel pins are clean and the dowel pin holes are clean. And so obviously, they're sliding in and out pretty easy. Uh, same on the bottom sliding out in pretty easy so what you do you just basically get a front iron rear iron it doesn't matter and you put your dowel pins on there and this is what you want to see when you're sliding in your rotor housing it should go in there fairly easy you should not um, struggle at all so as you can see it's it slides in there it just it just fell in there on its own you see, it just, and I could just let go of it and it just slides in on, on its own. Now, if it were distorted or warped, you would not see that. And uh, let me show you the bad rotor housing. So, so this is the, so that's the distorted uh, rotor housing. As you could see, uh, doubt pins are going in there fairly easy they're sliding in there fairly easy on the top and on the bottom sliding in there pretty easy so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and use the same method but you're gonna see the difference on this uh, rotor housing since this is the distorted one so I'm gonna try to push it in there as easy as possible and it's not going in there so I'm pushing pretty hard and it's just there's a lot of tension it's not wanting to go in easily it's not dropping so I have to and it's still not touching here still not touching here so it, it's obviously distorted I mean we measured it but this is another method where you could tell that there's definitely distortion now it's stuck in there so I pushed it in too far so um, I gotta try to get it out but uh, yeah it's not coming out so again that's if, you, if you're getting this obviously it's 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 um it's distorted so I have to shut the camera off now or maybe I could just get the Okay, as you can see, uh, yeah, it wasn't that easy to get out. So uh, let me show you uh, one more time the good rotor housing. And this is what you want to see. And then we'll move on to the next step. So, boom. Nice. This is 
what you want to see. So there we go. There you have it. All right, and in the end, there was only one. So out of the four rotor housings, only one rotor housing checked out. So this is the final step that I, I take, and pretty much uh, after this step, if everything checks out good, then uh, it's definitely a uh, thumbs up in my book, and it's ready to go. So what um, you want to do, you want to check the, the width. You want to put your rotor housing this way. You want uh, the spark plug holes uh, facing that way. Uh, I recalibrated my uh, micrometer, piece of paper and a pencil so you could uh, log every uh, width on there. And you wanna start at the top. That should be your uh, your uh, thickest point and work your way down. So Mazda recommends you to do it in three different spots. Uh, I go all the way around. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it and see what kind of numbers we get. All right, so I'm gonna start right here on the top, and I'm not sure if the camera's uh, getting the the numbers on here. So I'm just gonna start off with the, the center of the uh, rotor housing, and I'm moving the micrometer back and forth as I'm turning it. And that's the number I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the number down. All right, and here are the numbers uh, for the width and the rotor housing to see if there's any kind of shrinkage going on. And as you can see, the numbers are pretty consistent. Uh, I measured it from the middle and just worked my way all around. So basically, um, I, I just um, go all the way around. I mean, you could go to the three points from the top, center, and then the bottom. This is the hot, this is the hot area. So this is where they mainly tend to shrink. And um, I've seen quite a few rotor housings uh, shrink from there um, in my years of building. But um, this rotor housing, it's good. As you can see, the numbers are consistent. And what you're looking for is basically um, three thousandths of an inch. There shouldn't be any uh, difference uh, among uh, the top, center, and bottom. So if there's anything that's uh, beyond three thousandths of an inch, it's definitely... Uh, uh, a rotor that has shrunk and um, anything could have cost it overheating uh, some sort of uh, a detonation or you know just depending what you're running what you're doing so but basically it's just from overheating and uh, that's a very hot area down here so but as you can see this is a good rotor housing numbers are consistent they look good they're not there's, there is no difference between them. Uh, anything beyond uh, three thousandths of an inch, it, it's all, you know, uh, one thousand. And, 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 and I could go back and check them. I could check them twice, three times. Sometimes I'll go back and check them, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with these numbers. I'm satisfied with these numbers. So um, that's, that's a good, uh, that's a good indication that this rotor housing is good. This rotor housing passed the test. Everything's awesome. I don't have to worry about anything when I built this engine. Um, like I said, the chrome's great. Uh, the O-ring jacket's great. Um, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not warped. It's, it hasn't shrunken. Everything's good on this rotor housing. Now I'm gonna show you another rotor housing that does have some shrinkage on this area, and you'll see. Uh, uh, the difference between this a good rotor housing and a bad rotor housing all right so here's the bad uh series one rotor housing a few things did check out good but uh it's not all good in the hood but uh <laughs> yeah anyway uh so the chrome it's good uh water o-ring jackets are good but 
this is this rotor house is distorted and there's some shrinkage so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, the difference between uh, good rotor housing that uh, has uh, some consistent numbers and we're gonna look at the numbers on this rotor housing so here we go so we're gonna start off just like the other rotor housing and we're gonna check uh, the width right here on top and we're just gonna go ahead and write it down or document uh, the numbers that we do get and I'm not sure if the camera's capturing it, but here we go. All right, so there you have it. Uh, difference between the good rotor housing. So if you look at the numbers, they're kind of matching uh, up here in this area, which is uh, the compression side is the cool area. But as we start uh, working our way down to the hot spot right here, uh, you can see the numbers, just, they do start to change and uh, there's definitely some shrinkage. And the shrinkage on this, it's really, really bad it's, it's beyond uh three three thousandths of an inch uh between each other so this one good rotor housing very nice consistent number uh this one there's no need to second guess yourself for your measurements so you could go back and check um, i already checked it like three four times um it's not the first time it's happened to me uh, especially with these older engines, uh, even with the new ones, uh, even when you're boosting, uh, turbo boosting, or, or it could happen to any engine. As you can see, this is a 10A, very early on uh, that was happening. So um, it was an issue back then, it was an issue in the 80s, 90s, and it's always going to be an issue. So there you have it, guys. Um, numbers are not matching up. This is a very bad rotor housing, and in my opinion, it might seem like a good rotor housing. You look at it, the chrome is great, the chrome looks good. Um, the coolant seals here, they're just, there's no corrosion. I mean, it looks beautiful, it looks nice. And 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 uh, yeah, it's just something that the eyes can't see. It, it's, uh, it's distorted, it's warped, there's shrink, it's, it's shrunk down here. So uh, yeah, you can't reuse this. I mean, you could probably, um, get away with it for a few miles a couple miles uh, maybe even more but um, it's only a matter of time before it uh, uh, yeah you just don't want to even take the chance man I mean it's, it's a shame it's a it, it, apparently to the naked eye it looks like a good rotor housing but it's not uh, I measured the two series one rotor housings and they're they both uh, they both have uh, uh, warpage they're both shrunk um it, it's just um i guess the previous owner he obviously overheated the car and party kept running it like i said before rotary engines are very faithful i don't care what anybody says they're very faithful they'll run even though you overheat them and and uh water might get in there they'll, they'll still start i mean uh, i've had quite an experience with these but um yeah you could tell they kept running this engine real hot and uh to the point where it worked and it shrunk so uh there you have it guys uh so those are the steps that i take uh to before i move on to the next step on um stacking the engine up you just want to make sure your rotors are good and obviously your rotor housings again out of the four only one was good so uh, i'm back to square one guys i don't know what to do I don't know if we either go with 12A or 13B. Let me know in the comments, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that uh, notification bell. And um, just like the video, guys. And uh, plenty more content coming out. So there you go, guys. There you have it. That's the bad news. We'll see where we go from here now.